So this is a question I get asked a lot, and rather than explain it, um, here's an awesome video that I am re-uploading that explains it with, uh, you, you'll see, it's awesome. My name is Dr. Michael Greger, uh, founder of the nonprofit website nutritionfacts.org. Every year I read through every issue of every English language nutrition journal in the world. What's the number one cause of death? Number two cause of death? Go down the list. These are largely diet-related diseases. It's the foundation of these theories tend to be that, you know, carbs are bad because they increase insulin production. And insulin, um, having high levels of insulin associated with cancer, associated with lots of bad things. But meat is insulinogenic. There's a, there's a paper by, uh, you know, Holden colleagues, 1997, uh, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, called, in fact, you can look it up, it's probably free by now, Insulin Index of Foods. It went through about 50 different foods, and eating beef causes a greater spike in insulin than white potatoes and white pasta and, uh, you know, and white rice. More insulin, and that, if that's the villain, right, then you'd stay away from the meat. What causes insulin resistance? It's intramyocellular lipid. It's fat that's inside the muscle fibers that interferes with insulin signaling such that um, uh, your body has to keep pumping insulin to try to force it um, into your uh, muscles, which use up about 85% of, uh, of the, your blood sugars. Your blood sugars rise because they can't enter into the cells. And, and not just any fat, but particularly saturated fat is toxic. So it actually is called lipotoxicity. And that's, that's the term that's used in the literature to describe the effect that saturated fats have on the insulin, uh, on producing insulin resistance. Back in 1927, they took these medical students, put them on a high-fat diet, and within days, their insulin sensitivity dropped. Their, uh, they had twice the blood sugar spike to the same meal. Your fat cells actually fill up with fat. They swell. You don't get more fat cells. They just get bigger. And when they stretch to a certain point, they start f spilling fat over into your bloodstream and that gets lodged in your muscles, and that can spill over, get lodged in your liver, and cause insulin resistance in your liver, make things worse, and then can actually lodge in the pancreas, in the insulin-producing cells of your pancreas, and then you can actually get that same lipotoxic, that fat toxicity, um, in your pancreas that reduces, uh, eventually, um, reduces the amount of insulin you can produce, and then you're in, you know, florid uh, type 2 diabetes, and, which is the number one cause of uh, blindness, number one cause of, uh, of non-traumatic amputations, number one cause of kidney failure in this country. These are horrific complications. And what does modern medicine have to give them? Just trying to reduce the complication rate. I mean, just not treating the underlying cause, um, and we can cure this disease even years into the process, which, yeah, which is really exciting. It's not like, you know, the, I mean, we used to think, you know, we just kind of kill off these, these, uh, these, these, these betas of these insulin-producing pancreatic cells, but it's actually, maybe we're just kind of suppressing them, we're just, and we can actually kind of wake them back up um, if we actually eat um, a, a cleaner diet, reduce that fat. Diabetes is a disease of fat toxicity in our organs, in our muscles, in our liver, in our pancreas. Our body needs sugar to function. It's the fuel that powers our movement. The problem is when the sugar can't get into the cell and therefore stays in the bloodstream. The way that sugar gets into the cell is through insulin. Insulin is the key that unlocks the door to the cell so that the sugar can get inside. Imagine you are going to the front door of your house with your house keys. However, you find that you can't unlock the door. There's nothing wrong with your keys, but you find that there's something jammed inside the lock. There's chewing gum in the lock. When a person has diabetes, the person's insulin isn't working. The glucose can't get into the cell. But why is this? It's because the person's cell is clogged with fat, in the same way that the lock is jammed with chewing gum. You're a type 1 diabetic, is that correct? I am. And you're a promoter of the, uh, the fruit lifestyle, 80 cent 10, vegan, high carb, low fat? Absolutely. And as a type 1 diabetic, you had type 1 diabetes before you got in the lifestyle? Or? That's right, it actually sort of helped me uh, find the lifestyle. For sure. So uh, what would be your tips for diabetics? You really have to be disciplined about your fat intake and really be aware of your fat intake. So using something like chronometer uh, to figure out exactly what percent of calories are coming from fat. And if you're a uh, type 1 diabetic, it's the number one mistake. If you're a type 1 diabetic and you start eating a lot of fruit 
And if you don't take insulin at least 15 minutes before you start consuming the fruit, you're going to get a high blood sugar and be like, what the heck's going on and blame the fruit. It's not that. It's that the fruit raised the blood sugar so much quicker than your other, uh, your past diet. So you really have to make sure you have a window before you take the insulin, you know, and then when you eat. That's so you, like the most important thing. I get so many people saying, oh, I, I'm doing this fruit thing and I and I and my blood sugar was like 400. And I, that's, that's the reason. My fat content is really consistent, yeah. which makes it so it's easy to figure out how much insulin to take and so don't have to worry about so it. So you're like just sugar, sugar, sugar. Pretty much. Nice, nice. So type two of diabetes, you can reverse that, yeah? Oh, for sure. Check Ta out the movie Forks Over Knives. Definitely.